a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, Robert, how you doing, man? Yes, good, and thank you for taking my call. I wanted to Morning. let you know that I've been a subscriber for a couple of years, just different members of your team, and I really enjoy it. But really the reason I'm calling is to express my sincerest gratitude for you providing that information information yesterday on the small business grant. I'm a small business owner and primary breadwinner for my family. And if I can get that money, it's going to really mean a lot to my family. So that's awesome. Thank you for uh, taking the time to do that. No, well, well, listen, man, we appreciate you growling a problem with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Cultivate wisdom. You don't need to accumulate knowledge to become wise. Anyone can become wise. When you become wise, you respect your body, you respect your mind, and you respect your soul. When you become wise, your life is controlled by your heart, not your head. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 65, NASDAQ up 3, S&P's down 1.5, gold contract up $6.50 trading at 1679 an ounce. We have silver down 49 cents, $18.99 an ounce. Light sweet crude off $2.17, $87.19 a barrel. Notes and bonds. The 10-year note up eight ticks, trading 111.12. The 30-year up 10 at 124.31. And king dollar. King dollar is uh, up 87 ticks, trading 113.03. The euro is at 96. The yen is at 146, and the British pound is at 110 to 1 U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. Well, let's take a look at the futures first. You've been in a consolidation all day long. Each time it tries to get up to higher price, it's sold down. And you can see this has been a tight consolidation. We haven't been in a consolidation like this for a while. Uh, bottom line, the, well, overnight you had a high out there is 36, uh, 35. But since the market's been open, it's really like 36.20 down to approximately 36, uh, no, 35.92. That's still 30 points. But it, it, it's interesting. It's 30 points, but it, it feels like it's like a small consolidation compared to where we're in. That's that's how this is shaking out. That's in your um, E mini. So if we take a look at the NQs, same type of setup inside the NQs. Inside the NQs out here, you can see this consolidation. They, they kind of get it down, but guess what? It's not going up either. So the top of this uh, consolidation has been approximately the uh, 10,925 uh, into that low out there of the uh, 10,805. Now, if we that being said, okay, the bottom line is that you get tremendously light volume here. Okay, so the real question is going to be, are you going to find buyers? So buyers going to come into this and try to jack it up. Uh, it doesn't look to me like that's going to happen today. You know, um, we go into the gold contract. We take a look at the gold contract. Gold contract uh, down 650. Uh, now you had another contraction of volume, so you went lower today. It rejected 1668. Uh, the low of yesterday. Let's see what this was. So yesterday we did. 172,000 contracts, low is 1667. Today, 124, low is 1668. You know, so that's saying gold one, and, and by the way, both of those are going against 215,000. So, you know, now let's go to the SPY. The, this is still saying the market wants to bounce. Um, the real question is going to be, you know, are there going to be any buyers that come in? And the Fed, so the Fed minutes come out, folks. And when you take a look at these Fed minutes, it looks to me that the, the bottom line is that, um, you know, they commit, okay, the Federal Reserve committed to raising rates to a restricted level in the near term, holding them there for it to curb inflation. Several participants noted, particularly in the highly uncertain global economic 
in financial environment, it would be important to cal calibrate the pace of further tightening with the aim of mitigating the risk of significant adverse effects on the economic outlook. So during the meeting, U.S. Central Bank has agreed to boost benchmark lending 75 basis points for the third time, lifting the target rate to 3 to 3.25. And uh, bottom line is that what they're going to try to do here uh, with 3 to 3.25, and they want this thing close to, there it is right there. They want this at 4.4 by the end of the year. So, and when you, you do the numbers on that, if you get, let's say we take the top end of it, that really is saying that, okay, 75 basis points comes in at the November, I think it's November 2nd meeting. And then on the December meeting, let's see, meetings, calendar. So you have, yeah, November 2nd, uh, bottom line, probably 75 basis. December 14th, 50 basis, that gets you where they want to go. Yeah. And, you know, the, the bottom line is that restrictive-wise and, you know, the squeeze, what they're saying in, their, in, in those notes do not correspond to what's going on in the markets, nor in uh, what basically the rate structure or the dollar is uh, basically doing to uh, not only our economy, our economies everywhere, that will um, throw many people out of jobs. That's the bottom line. So that's where they're going to have to balance this thing. Uh, we'll find out whether they want to balance it or not. Are they just going to go for the whole uh, chicken caboodle? So, um, you know, and I think a lot of this right now is going to contingent on the aspect of you and I and the market in general as to how we perceive how they are going to continue to go forward. That's what it really comes down to. Yeah. And, of course, not continue to go forward. That, that's on a fundamental basis. On a reality basis, it's going to come down to the point, you know, the faster the rate structure goes up, the more folks that will have, they're, are going to be in trouble. Um, and it's not going to be, it's, 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 it, what happens with all of these folks, it's not really you and I, you know, it's always large funds, sovereigns, pension funds that get in trouble. And, you know, like you had the, the theory, like uh, the Reagan economics, if everything comes down, you know, well, the bottom line is that uh, when you have these huge events, um, the bottom line, it hits everyone and it hits everyone really quick. So, you know, we'll see where the whole thing shakes out. What's going to be intriguing, of course, if we go over to London, is that, you know, that Bailey, he's claiming that uh, by Friday they're going to clean up their balance sheets. Well, we'll see what happens there and we'll see exactly what that brings on to the marketplace. Dow Industrials are up 69 right now, NASDAQ's up 6, SP's a flat. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this, combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits, this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, diverse partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? 
Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up 68, NASDAQ up 13, S&P is up 1. Now, check this out. This is <laughs> it, it, the, good, the good news, you know, that we, we're not in the UK. If you're in the UK, man, this is going to get dangerous. So check this out. This is, I, it, it looks to me like, yeah, they, these funds are actually, they're doing two different things. They're, they're playing chicken with the aspect of their central bank. And in a month away, because watch, watch how the first part of the story is, is not where the chicken comes in, but the second part is pretty amazing. So you got, you have the, the, the European pension funds, right, right folks? What, they, what they're doing, what they're doing out here today is that they're calling their sponsors and they're looking for hundreds of millions of dollars. That's, that's the bottom line. A number of UK companies are facing calls to provide uh, a Call, you know, to provide emergency loans to their employee pension schemes and the latest bid for those to, to, to get cash. The funds especially want to protect their holdings of growth asset, assets or less liquid investments, such as those of infrastructure products, projects that are expected to benefit the scheme in the long run. Uh, here's a quote from the, uh, we have a number of large clients who are prepared emergency liquid facilities to be made available from their sponsors. So, you know, you have the companies, then you have the pension company, the, the funds of the pension companies. Europe is different than the United States. The bottom line is that they're going back to the companies asking for money. Now, check this out at the end. This is what I was talking about, the aspect of um, they basically kind of want it both ways. The, the higher rates okay, will be beneficial to these companies in the future, but basically the, the speed of it, they, they're going to get croaked. But listen to this man at the end. This is amazing. At the end, um, the bottom line is that some uh, pension, some of these funds, even though they need money, are buying up assets that they wanted all along, and they're buying them cheaper than they could have got them before. <laughs> so they're, 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 they're playing chicken, man. They're playing chicken with the Fed. Uh, with their Fed, their central bank. We'll see how it shakes out, man, but, you know, and we all know, and evidently they don't know that things can get even less expensive. <laughs> That's what's really bizarre. So let's go, let's go look at this pound for a second because, you know, when you're talking about a contagion, okay, so the pound's not that bad, man. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it got smoked. I mean, the pound in six months has gone from 130 to... 
until today it hit hit a buck. But right now, you know, let me just look at this. I think this this looks like a 38 percent retracement of the move. It's a 50, so it's a 50 percent retracement of the move. That's a normal move. So. We'll see how that basically shakes out, man, meaning that if they can get up and going. What we all can learn here, though, right, for sure, is that when you're in a fiat currency, folks, right, the bottom line is that they just keep printing money. That, that's, that's what they're going to have to do. That's the bottom line. That's what they all have to do. I mean, <laughs> that's how it goes, man. The, what, do they, what do they do? They don't print money. What are they going to do? The banks implode. The banks implode. The banks have everyone's money. They, you, know, you get the gist of it. It's, it's a roll down, all the way down the hill. Let's go into the Dow Industrials and take a look at the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow Industrials out here today. Movers out here. You have the top movers, Goldman Sachs, that's putting 20 positive points. United Health 16, Amgen 15, JP Morgan 13. Taken away from it, Home Depot, 9.5. Walmart, 9.5. Uh, Walgreens, 3. Nothing heavy, man. There's, there's no, there's no, well, there's no, there's a few big p plus points, but nothing really heavy. Home Home Depot. Let's go take a look at Home Depot and see what this is looking like. We pull this in. Okay, so let me put this on a three-year. So on a three-year, you can see what's saving it here. What's saving it is that you had a nice high volume spike at 278. That's what's saving it on the way down. Yeah. Not much here, man. Do the, only look at Toll Brothers. We'll look at a couple of these housing because what we have out here now, you probably heard out here this morning, the bottom line, you get the mortgage, 30 year mortgage rates, you know, banging out 7%. And just so you really understand something, the headline news there was, uh, and it, well, where we are anyway, 7.12 or something. The bottom line, folks, is that that's an 8% mortgage. <laughs> yeah. Eight, probably higher than that because. That's, the, that's your rate. They're adding on points to the rate. Then you get your closing costs. So there's big numbers out here, man. There is definitely big numbers out here. And then it comes down to the point of, um, you know, who's going to sell. And no one's going to sell with longer mortgages because it, se it seems like you're just making money. I mean, that, that's how it seems to shake out. If you get a 3.5%, 4% mortgage, it seems like it's, you're making money. I mean, let's go over the oil market. So the oil market, bottom line, couldn't handle higher price. This pulls back. So pulling back into 330 and you get 297. What, what, what this oil market didn't do, by the way, okay, let me just see this for a second. The first high, 97.91, 96.82. Okay, so you want to see something crazy? I mean, you know, the, the talk across the world is oil, oil, oil. Well, guess what? Oil's in a downtrend. <laughs> you get three lower highs, and I have three lower lows. That's a downtrend, man. Yeah. I mean, bingo, that one. And then you just take this all the way down. You can see what's happening here, man. So, no, the, the, the highs, they just missed, but the bottom line is that that's a downtrend, and that downtrend has actually been going on for five months, since 112. And that, what, that, what, is, what does that set up? That sets, sets up the aspect, folks, okay, that things are going to slow down, we're going to need less oil, and all of the above. Okay, if we go into, uh, let's go into the, the cars, because what you're going to see next is that, you know, we were, in, we were in this situation where used cars were just worth so much money. Well, bottom line, all that is taking care of itself. If we go to GM, we take a look at GM right now. We put this on a monthly. Look at this. This, this just keeps coming back. Look what GM did. GM went to the highs of the lows of March. That benchmark, man, is there. And we all better keep that in our minds. So the, the highs of the lows in, in GM was $32.32. .32. We hit 3065 in June, we hit 33 in July, and we just hit 31.10 this month, okay? This, the highs of the lows of March 
want to get hit. We can, let's just go over to Nike again. And it, it's when you pull up these larger companies, folks, okay? GM, I would I'd discard. I'm not, but I wouldn't discard Nike, man. I mean, you know, and the reason I wouldn't discard Nike is that they're an amazing business. They've always been a great business, and they can't get out of that bar. The top of that bar is $94. Well, they're at 88 now. They're at the bottom 60. They can't get out of it. And what does that say? That says that guess what? US, Europe, worldwide, if Nike can't do it, or they're gonna price Nike out at those lower levels, they're gonna price the rest of the market out at those lower levels. Stay right there, folks, come right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up 48, NASDAQ 14, S&P's down uh, 1. Let's go inside the NDX 100. Take a look at the strength versus the weakness there. Strength, Moderna. Moderna is up by uh, 9%. You got Airbnb. Up uh, five percent, Lucent's up four, and the PepsiCo is up four. PepsiCo come in with good numbers. We'll go through that again in a second. Uh, taken away from it, you got XL Corporation down three point six. Um, American Electric's off three point five. Splunk is down three, and XL uh, Energy is off three point eight. Let's get over to Pepsi for a second because um, they they came out with numbers this morning. So the lows, 153 for the year. The highs, 181. They pay a 2.7% dividend. And, you know, bottom line, you can see the pop that come out here. They, they yeah, let me, here's the, here's the bread that they made. They, they come in with numbers, man. That's the bottom line. They uh, come in with $22 billion to the top line, made $1.897 to the bottom line. So they're still making money hand over fist. Um, they do, let's see, 
They're pretty evenly. Uh, they, they do 44 billion in the U.S., 34 billion internationally. Look at these numbers, man. They still, you know, for junk food, it can, they're still basically going up. They're going up around two and a half percent per year. That's you get two and a half percent in the beverage division, two and a half percent in the Frito Lay. Yeah, they got they got some action out here. Let's go take a look at Caterpillar. So Caterpillar is trying to do an ABC structure on the way up, folks. And bottom line is that we had out here yesterday. Yesterday, it you know got the pop. The B point out here is that uh, that one eighty uh, ninety ninety eight. Uh, didn't have the volume yesterday, doesn't have the volume today. We'll see how this baby shakes out. Now, deer is set up the same way. So, th th and they trade together, there's no doubt about that. But you can see deer is set up the same way. Deer, you know, yesterday had some decent volume. That had seven, no, that had 1.4 million versus 1.6. But my take is that it looks to me like both of those are actually going to pop. Because in a bad market, uh, bottom line is that they, they start pushing and, you know, any, any equity that is pushing in a bad market, folks, you want to pay attention to. That's the bottom line. You know, that's what it comes down to because uh, that's UCO. Okay, so let's take a look at UCO. I think this is a inverted oil stock. Okay, so this is the, okay, so this is a pro share. Exchange traded fund, the fund sees daily investment results of twice the daily performance of the benchmark, which is the Bloomberg Commodity Balanced Crude Excess Return. I don't know what that is, man. That's the bottom line. Let me see this. Yeah. Okay, let's bring it up anyway. I'm not quite sure what's inside this. That's the real bottom line. So. Technically, though, you're pulling back with light volume. That's saying that this thing does, yeah. So you're pulling back today with uh, 1 million shares. You're going into 4.4. Um, that says it wants higher price. Now, let me make, so this is the fund seeks daily investment results, like twice the daily performance, yeah. I don't know what the, you know, the, the, these, are, these are always tough because you can see if this is twice the performance of the benchmark and it's oil, well, I guess the $30, oil, oil's down, this, this no, this, that should be up. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to move on on that because it, it's always hard if you're trading an ETF and you absolutely don't know exactly what is inside that ETF, you should be really careful because, you know, I don't know what's inside that. That's, that's the real bottom line. I don't know if it's off the price of oil. It looks like it's off the price of another indice. That's how it seems to be shaken out. Let's go take a look at the uh, GDX, okay? We take a look at the GDX. You're up 16 cents. You're coming into 37 million Yesterday we did 25, okay? So this is still not a bad setup, but we just don't have the movement. The move, there's no doubt that it looks to me that the CPI is going to be what the movement is all about. That's, I mean, this market is sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. And, you know, if it comes in with a hot CPI, it's going to make a difference. Uh, it, well, when I say it's going to make a difference, I don't see that the, the no matter what the CPI is, I don't see the, the aspect of the changing the 75 basis points and 50 basis points because they'll choke everything. They're going to choke everything with that anyway. The real question is going to be, you know, I guess if you come on a really hot CPI, you know, they jack it up even more. You know, we'll, we'll see how that works out. The thing that, you know, it's going to be really intriguing here is that if you remember the in 2008, this is if, if all the folks that are around 2008, you got to start thinking about what was thrown on the table when the bigger banks got into financial trouble. Okay, and it's not, my take is that, you know, the U.S. banks are in, in fairly decent shape. But I expect that what you're also going to see is that the, they're going to, have already lended to the European banks. That's my take on it. And if you remember, do you remember? So this would happen in 2008. And this was like pretty wild because 
they threw accounting standards out the window. And specifically what, what the Fed allowed was that you did not have to mock to mock assets inside of the bond market. So we're back on that you have to absolutely do that now according to account, accounting standards, okay? But <laughs> if, in fact, Europe does implode or the UK does implode, I expect what you're actually going to see, that type of contagion, what, one of the first things you, pro, I don't know, it won't be the first thing, but I suspect what you're probably going to see is the aspect that if it gets weird here, they'll turn around and say, okay, you don't have to mock them to the market. And so the way they got away with this, so, so watch what happened here, too, because all of those things they did not mock to market, they made a fortune on, right? So what happens is this. The way that the U.K. got in trouble is that they bought the bonds, but then they gave the bonds to banks for derivatives, okay? So it's collateral. they got to come up with more collateral, and they don't have any cash. They're, they're broke. They're broke. That's the bottom line. You know, they can sell assets, but of course, it always happens. They, they're buying assets that you can't sell. So they're broke in general. So what ends up happening is that there are assets that no doubt that are sovereign bonds, that are bonds that are going to be paid. And because the interest rate structure goes up so quick, the bond itself, let's say it paid, a, you know, 100 cents on the dollar, 110, the bond's probably worth 50 or 60 cents, right? The bottom line is that, you know, over the course of 20, 30 years, they're going to be paid back. Now, they're going to be paid back in fiat money, and they're going to be paid back at an inflated cost. Why? Because the bottom line, every time you get inflation, okay, if you borrow, you know, whoever borrowed $100 like four years ago, that's awesome, man. The bottom line, you're paying back probably 75 cents. You're not paying back to save uh, $75. You're not paying back the same $100. That's the... Uh, that's the, the thinking behind the aspect that you don't have to, you know, mock to market. We'll see where it shakes out. But if we get to that point, that, then you know that the system is in trouble again, you know. And I suspect, well, we may not see that here, but we will see that in London, I bet. I mean, that's, that's, how, that's, that's what may come out of this whole deal. Dow Industrials up 90, NASDAQ up 29, S&P's up 4.5. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien! Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now up 74. We get the NASDAQ up 23. S&P's up 2.5. And, and the bottom line is that, yeah, you get a sideways move that's happening up here. Um... And that's about it. Let's go. I'm going to go. I want to go over this again. Uh, this now. This just came across. Let's see what they're saying. U.S. pension funds, uh, U.K. pension funds, are offloading collateralized loan obligations as the nation's bond markets plummet, uh, and at least some investors fear the CLO prices uh, could fall further because of the key risk embedded in the securities. The the managers of leveraged loans and packaged into bonds. The risk is resulting. Security stem from guideline that can constrain these emitters less than seven percent of their portfolio should be rated in CCC. Oh, so this is interesting. So, so what's happening here also? They, they're getting the small sides, man. This is what happens with these de with these deals, man. Once you basically can't, you know, get the cash to pay off an initial loan, right? Unless you call on on it, then you start moving other things out. And uh, bottom line is that this is what a contagion's all about. And the, you know, the only time that I've seen this, and you know, that, and it was, thank God I had been in the market for a while at this particular point, it was, it was 98, and it was the Asian contagion. And what had happened, folks, is that, the, th the thing that was amazing to me about that more than anything, and, and that's what I think, we'll, we'll see whether it's, this is happening over here, is that in the Asian contagion, you know, the bottom line is that that had been going on for like almost like from April and it didn't implode until like July. Maybe, maybe, yeah, there was like three or four months, you know, but it seemed like it was, oh, that's the other side of the world. But it really wasn't the other side of the world because it kept reporting on, the journal kept reporting on, Wall Street Journal kept reporting on, it was on Bloomberg on a continual basis, and, you know, that the, the bottom line it jumped from Russia to, to Indonesia. Well, it actually jumped from Indonesia to Russia. And then, bah, boom. Okay, and Bob, it was the Bob boom because it had happened to be a American fund manager, you know, who basically had loaded up uh, long-term capital. Yes, thanks, Peter, uh, and in a big way. Now, the amazing part, right? Listen, the, 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 this is the this, listen to this. This is uh, one second. I get. I'm gonna just pull this up. I should know this by heart, okay? But just meaning. Um, what was the capital losses? Uh, I, I, what I wanted to know was that the long-term capital. When we when we take a look at the amount of money, okay, um, that we're talking in the long-term capital deal, right? It was like shot money, okay. In the, in the aspect of what we deal with now, you know, the, yeah, I'll, I'll pull it up at the, at the break. But you're talking about shop money. You're talking about, like, like it, it's just crazy, okay? Um, yeah, it's, it's basically one-tenth of what it is. It's something that's what a couple of targets are saying. But it was, it, it it's actually unbelievable when you actually 
get it. I'll, I'll have it on the next deal about how much we were talking. Well, because we're like talking like th there's there's individuals now that basically have more money. Yeah, here you go. Okay, so picture this. It was three to four point five billion that almost brought down the system. Right? Really? We're talking trillions now, folks. Trillions. You know, like when the, the when the bonds went up in Europe or the, even the bonds here, you're talking trillions with a T. That's that's how much leverage is out in that system. And then the cool, well, thank God we're not in the UK and folks in the UK, I, I feel for you. Particularly I feel for you for those, some of those funds because I expect what's going to happen. The funds are the ones that, well, it's the employees that end up taking the hit. That's what it comes down to. Let's go take a look at the uh, gold bugs index and see what that's looking at. Because a couple of these gold stocks, they're, they're pulling their head up right now. I will pull up the dollar in 1998, too. Yes, I will. Let's take a look. Okay, so... Yeah, this is a decent setup. We've done a 50% retracement. Yeah, light volume, no doubt, in the way back. And we'll see that they can get higher. So let's pull up the dollar in 1998. Right here. Let's trade. Let's trade at hundred. Basically hundred. Yeah. It, most of the time, it's been pretty stable. That's 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 the real that's the real bottom line. Um, you know, we'll see how this this number here out the, that one twenty one. You know, we're at the 113, but you can see that last uh, spike. You know, bottom line went from one oh six to one fourteen. This thing can get into that number in a second, man. It really can. I'm sure that you have all these, you, you had, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of meetings taking place simultaneously, meaning dollar meetings, folks. You get the IMF, when Bailey come out, he was at the IMF in Washington, D.C., or Connecticut, at the bottom line, they're having their meetings. Uh, no, the Washington, D.C., the IMF is at. Then they get the hedge fund meeting in Connecticut. Um, you know, the IMF, yeah, they're, they're all scratching their heads right now trying to figure out how they're going to bail out uh, these funds without the rest of the banks getting smoked and without the aspect of the panic inside of public markets. You know, what, what did happen overnight last night was um, in Vietnam, one of the fifth largest bank, uh, bottom line, had a run on the bank. And uh, what ends up happening, you know, the government came in, in the middle of it, uh, they turned around, and now they, they're, they're special of the day. They're paying 9.5% if you go put money into it. Can you imagine the, the, the propaganda behind that, okay? We got to run on the bank. The government had to come in and help, but I'm going to give you 9.5% today if you give me my money. And, uh, yeah, you get the gist of it. There's, there's problems out here, and the problems, no doubt, come from the aspect that, you know, money was very inexpensive for a long period of times, and what does happen when money is very inexpensive for a long period of time is that it's not utilized uh, as it should be. That's what it comes down to. Because you got to remember something, that most of those managers, you know, are going to get paid in performance. And if they don't get the performance, they're going to get fired. They don't lose money, man, because most of them don't have, you know, any skin in the game. I mean, you know, most times what you have with those large funds is that, you know, the bottom line, they are professionals. They probably try to do their best. Uh, but the schools that they go to teach them flat out, uh, take that bond market, leverage it up to the hilt. If you do well, you're going to have millions of dollars. And if you don't, you know, you're going to get fired. And guess what? Someone else is going to end up um, hiring you again because that's just how that whole business kind of shakes out. Market-wise out here, you know, if we take a look at the larger uh, volumes inside the NYSE and, and the Dow, 591. Actually, let's go. I want to go over and look at ExxonMobil. We'll do that as soon as we come back, too. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, let's go take a look at ExxonMobil. So uh, ExxonMobil out here trading at a price point of uh, up 44 cents. And I don't like what's happening with today, I can tell you that. You're up 45 cents, you've got 10 million shares, you're down yesterday with 17 million, you know. So my, my take, you know, as the last time we were here, that it wouldn't hold that high, okay? Because you see, the, it was going after the high, 24 million shares, 23 million going into this 33. Came down, you know, bottom line, my take is going to back down. I, you know, and I heard, you know, when Steve was talking about the aspect that on a yearly basis, you very well could have an, an ABC structure on the way up. I, I understand that. Um, but you're going to have to, let's see, where is that happening? Where is that? I have to put that back further. Let me see this. Yeah, I have a hard time actually seeing that because of the way that did more than, a, yeah, it did almost 100% retracement, you know. So, you know, I, I suspect that I, it looks to me like oil and the whole ball of wax um, is, is pulling back then. That's, that's, how, that's how this is shaking out. So it's really going to be intriguing because, you know, that's what the Saudis claim. The Saudis claim that there's not going to be enough demand for their oil. That's why they wanted to do it on a monetary basis. You know, who knows where that baby goes. But oil looks to me like it's backing down anyway. So what will get interesting is that if the dollar backs down, then oil can, you know, find a spot. There's no two ways about that. We'll see where that uh, baby is shaking out. But some of these other central banks, or maybe even now, they're going to have to do something with all these currencies. Can you imagine if all the currencies are worth, like, 
you know, like half, half of what they were worth. I mean, then you're just going to see U.S. funds going across, you know, the the pond, buying, buying, buying. There's no doubt about it. You'll see you're going to have a flat market out here, folks. This market's waiting for the CPI. Always remember, folks, the bank can claw your heart out. The bull can run you over. And thank God, there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 in the morning. Great show, great show folks. We'll get him, folks. Building wealth.